everybody. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Zoo School. My name is Jen here at the Roger Williams Park Zoo and I am really, really excited today because it's springtime. And I love springtime because I get to spend time outside with my family. And one of the things that we enjoy doing together is working in the garden. And when we're working in the garden, we often make a lot of new friends. And those new friends are members of the biggest group of animals in the whole wide world. And they are, you guessed it, bugs. Now, some of you might be saying, oh my gosh, bugs, ew, gross. And I get it, I do. I used to feel that way too. But like with anything in life, the more you learn about something, the more valuable you find it to be, and you can start to change your perspective a little bit. So in just a minute, I'm gonna introduce you to two different kinds of bugs. We are gonna take a really close look at them and figure out if they are true insects or not. And we'll talk a little bit about what makes an insect an insect as well. Um, we're gonna start by looking at this tank right here. Now, if you've ever been to the zoo in the warmer months, you may have even taken part in our touch tank. And if we look at our touch tank, it gives some clues to the animals that are inside. So we have some nice soft ground here. These, this is actually cypress mulch. And here we have food. So I have a slice of banana, a slice of apple, and believe it or not, this yellow stuff here, that is actually water that animals can chew on because of this animal, if we put a dish of water, they might actually drown. So we don't wanna have a dish of water in there. We wanna have safe water. Um, and then we have shelter. So just like us, animals need food, water, and shelter. I'm gonna lift this shelter up and we'll see who's inside. Oh, there's one of my little friends right there. And let's see, I bet he's over here. There's another one of my friends. So if you've never seen these guys before, I'll tell you that they are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Now these aren't the kind of bugs that would be out in my backyard because I don't live in Madagascar. But we do have lots of different animals in our backyard that do the same job. Let me pick him up. Oop, can you hear him? I don't know if you could hear that, but he gave a little hiss. That's where he gets his name. Go ahead, little buddy. All right, I'm gonna put him on my hand while I put this little house back for his friend here. Okay. So let's get a closer look. So he is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Now, if he were wild out living in the forest in Madagascar, he would have a super important job. His job would be to eat anything that falls on the ground. So he is a decomposer. The, anything that's on the ground, that's also called detritus. So if we're thinking of them in a food chain, he is a detritivore but we can just remember him as a decomposer. He's gonna eat any of the leaves that fall on the ground in the rainforest, um, anything that falls fruit, anything like that. What's really important about that job is he eats all of that stuff that might get really yucky on the forest floor, and then he digests it and creates fertilizer, essentially, for the forest. So the rainforest cannot survive without these little guys. And even though we don't have rainforest here in Rhode Island, we do have temperate deciduous forests that also rely on decomposers to eat the detritus that's on the ground. So even if we don't like bugs, we need them for sure. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look and we're gonna to try to figure out if my friend here is an insect or not. So some of you may know how many legs an insect has. So let's take a look. How many legs does he have? One, two, three, four, five, six legs. And I think insects have six legs. They do, so that's our first clue. He has six legs. They also have three body parts. The first one is his head. Now his head is where antenna come out of. So if we look kind of closely, you can see his head is actually under here where the antenna are coming out. Some people might be looking down at him and they may think that this is his head because I think it kind of looks like he's got eyes right here. Kind of makes him look like a, like a frog, I think. It's kind of silly. But those actually aren't, um, aren't eyes. They are pronotum. And that they're actually much bigger on males than female cockroaches. So I can tell that, that he's a male. 
So we have his head right there. Now, another part of an insect's body is the thorax. So let me see if I can move him around a little bit. Come on, little buddy. Oops. Oh, thanks. Oops. So try to get a better shot. Come on, kiddo. Yeah. So his thorax is where his legs are attached. So that's the middle part of his body, his thorax. And then the biggest part of his body down here, that's his abdomen. So he's got six legs. He has three main parts of his body, head, abdomen, and thorax. So he is indeed an insect. All right, now let's put him back. Now it's important for me to remember here that, you know, he can't hurt me at all. He can't bite, he can't sting, he can't even fly. I'm really big and he's really little. So we're, we're used to each other. Um, but it, it is really important if you ever wanna pick up a bug, you definitely wanna get a grown up with you just to make sure you don't get bite or stung. Remember that most animals are really little and we're really big and we could accidentally scare them. And when an animal is scared, it can sometimes bite or sting. So we wanna make sure we're safe around bugs. Now the next animal, I'm gonna actually put gloves on. So, I'm putting gloves on because I wanna keep this animal safe from me. So, anything that might be on my hands. Soap, hand sanitizer, lotion could get into this animal's body through its hard shell. The hard part of a bug's shell is called an exoskeleton, or when they shed it, it's called an exuvium. They do shed it um, as they grow up. So you can see this nice hard shell out here is where I could accidentally uh, hurt him if, if I had anything on my hands that, that he absorbed. Um, now this is an African giant millipede. I'm going to pick him up and put him in my hand so we can get a nice close look. He's an African giant millipede. And he actually does have a kind of a cool defense. It's another reason I'm wearing gloves, is if he gets scared, he can secrete this milky substance through his shell or his exoskeleton, and it could make him taste really yucky if I were a bigger animal that might want to eat him. So in Madagascar, uh, lemurs might try to eat a bug like this, and that outside um, liquid would taste super, super yucky. So they would quickly spit him out, and then he would be able to go about his day. So the first thing you might notice when we look at my millipede friend here is the legs. He's got some dirt on him right there. So uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he's got more than six legs. He actually has two pair of legs for every body segment. So if you see every one of these body segments has four legs, isn't that crazy? So he's got a whole bunch of legs, way more than six. The other thing is he doesn't have those three defined body parts like we could see on the cockroach. So um, I'm gonna go say that he's not an insect. Oops. But he is a really, really cool animal. Now out in nature, Madagascar hissing cockroaches and African giant millipedes have the same role. So they're both eating anything that falls on the ground in the rainforest. That's a super, super important job. Now again, he can't hurt me. I'm wearing the gloves. But even, even if I wasn't wearing the gloves, I wouldn't be worried about him hurting me because you, can't, you can see that he's very, very comfortable. He's very safe. He's not um, creating that, that milky substance. And I really like the way he walks. I think it's really important when, um, as, as big humans, we decide to be really kind to small creatures. We don't have to, you know, we can go about our whole day and not, not even really think about them. But they are, they are constantly working to protect, to protect all of uh, nature and make sure it's working, working the right way. And we rely on nature to get our food and shelter and water, so. So even if we don't like bugs, I think we need to thank them. Look at how he hangs on, isn't that cool?
I'm gonna get his little dish right here. If he doesn't live in here, we just have him traveled in here, pet traveling in here. Go ahead, buddy. I'm just gonna set him down gently. He's so big, and believe it or not, he's not even full grown. He can get uh, about as big as your ruler once he is full grown, so about a foot, which is kind of crazy. Okay, we're just gonna put his lid on. And I wanna thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Zoo School. Your Zoo School challenge today is a pretty fun one. You can get outside into nature and you can either draw or take a picture if you have a phone. You can take a picture of a bug that you find or draw a picture and you can post it in the comments below. And we wanna send a special shout out to our nature swap here at our big backyard because if you complete any of the Zoo School challenges, you can get bonus points. If you're not a nature swapper, there's more information in the post. You can just click on the link and find out how to become a nature swapper. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's super cool. You get to collect nature items and either uh, bring them into the zoo once we're open, or you can submit it online, get points, and then you can actually save those points to get some cool things like shells or bones, um, some art. There's lots of really cool things in our nature swap. So uh, if you haven't been there, hopefully you can check it out when we reopen. Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to see you, and uh, I can't wait to see pictures of the bugs you find once you're outside. Have a great day.